Guess what? It's Sunday. I get to do my job. The name of the message today is One Piece of the Puzzle. We're going to turn to Romans, the 8th chapter, verse 28. Let me just give you a minute. I'm sure Chris is going to have that scripture up here on the screen. So if you don't feel like turning to your Bible, just look up here. To my left, your right, and we'll uh, read the Word of God. Romans 8, chapter 28, we're going to be reading out of the American Standard Version. And we know that to them that love God, all things work together for good, even to them that are called according to His purpose. I want you to think one piece of the puzzle. Whenever you go to the store and you buy a puzzle, you always look at the picture. It's always so pretty, and you pick out the prettiest one that you want to want to do with your granddaughter or your kids or maybe your spouse and, and everything like that. And it looks so pretty on the box. But then when you open the box and you see all these pieces, and you just happen to take one out, and you take it out and you look at it and you look at it, man, I wonder where this goes. Well, you know it goes to the piece. I mean, you know it goes to the puzzle. You know it fits somewhere amongst that beautiful picture you just saw and that you picked out. But you have no idea where it goes yet. And I want you to look at this as pain. That little piece is your pain. You have no idea where it goes. You don't know the purpose of that piece, except you know it fits somewhere in this huge piece of puzzle. Pain will change us. The key is what we do with our time and our pain. Pain will change us. There's no doubt about that. In times of death, Heartaches, loss, disappointment, all that. All this will not leave you the same as when you first went into it. It will change you. When you lost a loved one or when we lost our parents, I didn't come out the same as I went into it. None of us do. If you go through a divorce or a legal battle, a friend that betrays you, it will change you. Eventually, it will pass. You'll get through it, but you will be different. Now, how the pain changes and how the pain changes you is all up to how you handle it. You can come out bitter, or you can come out better. You can come out with a chip on your shoulder and blame God, or you can come out stronger and with a better confidence in God. You can come out defeated and giving up on all your dreams, or a new passion, a new fire, and a new excellence for doing God's work can come out of this pain. Don't just go through it. Grow through it. Now listen to this. Don't just go to it. All right? Grow through it. It's coming. We've all experienced pain. It's changed us. Some of it's changed us for the better. But a lot of times pain and the attitude that you took within experiencing that pain you didn't prosper through it but today I'm going to show you how to prosper through that because pain is going to happen no matter what you're not going to live your life without some kind of pain it may be a heartache and again it may be a divorce it may be a loss of a parent a loved one whatever the case may be it may be a legal battle I think we've all experienced friends betraying us but just remember, go through it. <clears throat> Don't just go through it, but grow through it. 
anyone can give up. Anyone can let this overwhelm them. But all that's doing is wasting the pain. I know you've all heard that saying, no pain, no gain. Well, there's a purpose for pain. There is a purpose. But it's not always negative. And in this case, it's not going to be negative. The pain is not there to stop you. It's there to prepare you and to develop you. Now listen to that. The pain is not there to stop you. It's there to prepare you and develop you. Don't put a question mark where God has put a period. I've heard this before. I never really understood it. But after I've done this study, I now understand it. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians. I'm sorry. Let's turn to Matthew's. Matthew, the fifth chapter now. And then we're going to go to 2 Corinthians. I chose to read Matthew 5:45 out of the English Standard Version, and it says this, So that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven, for he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust. So if you've ever asked God, God, why are you allowing me to go through this? Why? Because the rain must come for the just and the unjust. Do you remember him on the cross? That was not justice. That was not justice for his life. And we're no better. We're going to get condemned for things that people say we did. And it's going to cause pain. You know you didn't do it. Bless you. You're going to get accused of things. People are going to look at your situation and they're going to judge it. But not at this church because we don't judge. But there is pain. But we're going to grow from this pain. Let's go to 2 Corinthians, first chapter, verse 3 and 4. And again, we're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to go to the NIV version. So whatever Bible you have today, I'm sure we're going to hit one of them. 2 Corinthians, verse one, oh, I'm sorry, chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. It reads, Praise to the Lord our God and Father Jesus Christ, God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. So the pain that you went through has a purpose. You may not understand it. You may not like it. You probably don't want to go through it, but guess what? There's a purpose for it. And it's always been brought to my attention is, you know what, how do you minister to people that you have nothing in common with? How do you minister to a prostitute or, or someone that's... Um, living a lifestyle that you've never experienced in your life. Well, it's very difficult, but God has put it in His Word, and He has allowed us to draw knowledge from His Word. But you don't have to go through the exact same thing to be able to relate to someone. Pain is pain. Hurt is hurt. Betrayal is betrayal. Judging unjustly is judging unjustly. It doesn't matter what situation. It doesn't matter what predicament you're in. You can help someone. But you've got to learn from the pain that you're going through. When you go through something painful, in one sense you have been given a gift. You're now uniquely qualified to help others struggle through the same situation that you had struggled. 
Don't sit around feeling sorry for yourself. Go out there and lift someone else up. We've always done this at this church. We don't sit around. We don't feel sorry for ourselves. What we do is we know at that point we need to get out and we need to bless someone. And whenever you feel like, you know what? I just can't go through this anymore. I cannot live the life I'm living anymore. I'll tell you the best way to handle that. Go to the blessing box. Bless someone else. Call someone that you haven't talked to in a while and just say, hey, what's up? What you doing? What's going on in your life? And soon you forget everything that you're going through. And then you will focus on that person. It is just like Christmas. And you know how I feel about Christmas. You know what? It's not about the gift. It's about giving of the gift to someone that will appreciate it. Things happen to us for a reason. Some things are to help us grow, mature, and come up higher. Then there are times when God will allow you to go through difficult seasons so later you can be instrumental on helping someone get through a difficult time. He can turn your mess into a message. This very thing was meant to destroy you. God can direct it to lift you out and lift you up and bring you to a new level. Can God trust you with the pain that is given to you? Now listen to this. Can God trust you with the pain that has been given to you? Can God trust you with the uncomfortableness? Will you get negative and bitter? Will you ask the question, why is this happening to me? I say this with all the love that I have for you. It's not about you. When my mom and dad went to be with the Lord, and whenever you lose someone that you love very closely, it's very painful and very uncomfortable. I didn't like it. I didn't embrace it. It hurt family members. Although it brought us closer, it brought us closer to the pain. But we had to realize that God put a period and there was no need for a question mark. It may have been because we were too comfortable. We depended on them. We depended on their relationship with God instead of our relationship with the same God. We were part of the ministry, but we weren't the ministry. In our eyes, they were the ministry. But what it should have been is, it's God's ministry. I am a willing vessel. It's not about me. It's not about the pain that I'm going through. It's about, okay, what am I going to do with this pain? Am I just going to sit back and wallow in it? Am I just going to embrace it? Am I going to blame God? Am I going to blame outside circumstances? Or am I going to take ownership of this pain that I'm going through and say, you know what, God, I have faith in you. I don't understand it. I don't know why this happened. But you understand and you know the purpose of this. So what can I learn from this? And I've learned that I can love people that I never thought I could love. I never thought that I could have compassion for the people that I now have compassion. I never knew that my sister and I could get a better relationship. I never knew that I could fall in love with a complete stranger. Whenever I realize, you know what, he's not a stranger or she's not a stranger, that is a potential brother or sister in the Lord. 
So why should I be shy? Why should I be nervous? Because at the very end of life, either I'm going to spend eternity with them or I'm going to spend eternity without them. And I like the first choice. We have a visitor today. First time I ever got to meet him. It may be the last until we get to heaven. So never take an opportunity, whether you're going through pain, because I can look back and there were so many people that came up to us and reached out to us. But at times I was so embarked and, man, what am I going to do? I mean, what are we going to do? How am I going to tell the church that we're not going to have church anymore? I mean, how am I going to tell my sister that, you know what, um, you just need to move on? How am I going to tell the people that supported my mom and dad that we're just not going to be able to keep the church going? But thank God, God had a bigger plan. He was able to take that pain and that complete mess and put a message to it. God is awesome. God is a working God that never stops fulfilling His purpose in us. It's a glorious day. I mean, when you look out, usually whenever I have a message like this, somehow God sends sunshine and blue skies and, and everything like today or opposite of what today seems like outside. But even though outside may be dreary, Today, there is sunshine in my heart because I can now take pain and know the meaning of it. It's not to punish me, certainly not to stop me. It has a purpose. And I don't want to waste any pain that I go through because I also experience a lot of joy and happiness. But it's easy to succeed. It's easy to flourish when everything is going great. But when you're in pain and you see no light at the end of the tunnel, when all you want to do is just stay in bed and just throw the sheets over your face and just exist and hope that the next day, the next morning, will bring hope and sunshine only to find out it doesn't. All it does is bring another day of darkness, another day of despair, another defeated circumstance in my life. And I'm sorry, I don't like living like that. That's not a message that I want to give, and that's certainly not a message that I want to experience from my congregation. And I know that's not how God intended for us to live our lives. Every day... We need to shake those covers off. We need to be excited that we've got another opportunity. Even though you may be feeling this pain, you may be feeling depression, you may be feeling a loss. Move beyond that. Learn from that. Don't let that defeat you because there's people out there that actually care for you. In this world of nothing but me, myself, and I, there are people that love you. There are people that are willing to, to, because they've experienced the pain and they've learned from the pain. And they know that pain is only temporary. But a relationship with God is eternal. Now, you're not really hearing that because you would be excited at this point. More excited than I am. Pain is only temporary. But your relationship with God will get you through that pain and will allow you to spend eternity with your Heavenly Father. So we think that because we're Christians, we're immune to it. About the Garden of Gethsemane, the Lord's Supper, and all that, that was very painful because he knew what his purpose of life was, and it was coming to that point. Now he did that 
He suffered the pain and the humility on the cross only to be able to bring us joy later on. So don't let Satan rob you of that joy that we're supposed to have because God never promised us that we wouldn't go through pain. But he did say that he would stick with us through that. And we will come out victorious and we will have joy in our heart. I read a story the other day, and, and, and maybe, well, actually, I didn't read it. I read one story, but I'm not going to tell that story. But I did hear the story on the news about this, this elderly woman. Um, she was getting up in age, and and she was a little overweight. You know, she had been struggling um, since her early 20s uh, with her weight. And she got really sick. She started, um, um, her feet started swelling. Um, she was just in pain all the time. So um, she went to the doctor early in this stage. And, and the doctor said, well, you're probably just going through some kind of, um, change in life or, or some kind of virus or something, but he couldn't pinpoint it. So months went on and everything like that, and she just got worse. Her stomach started swelling. Her feet got bigger. She just felt horrible. And it got to the point where she started having these stomach cramps, and it was unbearable, and she told her husband, hey, I need to go to the emergency room. And all the pain that she was going through, she explained to the doctor. And the doctor said, I know exactly what's wrong with you. Ninety minutes later, he walked through the door and handed her husband a new baby boy. So all that pain and all that suffering she went through for all those months, there was a birth at the end of it. So look at your pain like this. I mean, a lot of you are pregnant and don't even know it. A lot of you are experiencing pain and you don't know why. You don't know the purpose. You see this one little piece of the puzzle, but you don't know where it fits. You know what it eventually will look like because you have a picture of it. But you got this piece and it's, it's oddly shaped. You have no clue where it goes. But then at the end, you have a birth. And it finally fits in. And you realize it had a purpose. Even though it's a small piece, it had a huge impact in my life. Now today, as we get ready to enjoy the holidays tomorrow, or today and the rest of tomorrow, just remember... There are people out there that don't have the privilege of knowing that pain can turn into something good. Maybe, maybe you don't even know it yet, but trust me, God has a purpose for the pain that you're going through. God had a purpose for Job's pain. Satan couldn't kill him but he could come awful close to it. But God said, you know what? Joe, go ahead and tempt him. I know exactly what he's made of. I know what he's going to become. I know exactly how he's going to handle this. Satan gave him everything that he could. And Joe came out victorious. Now tell me that Joe knew at the beginning of this battle that he would lose his family and his wife and all of his friends and everything like that. And tell me, how can I ever learn from that? Yes, we hear the story that he prospered even more after that, but that still didn't bring his wife back, still didn't bring his family completely back. But there was a purpose for his pain and nothing else but to learn that, you know what? Satan can throw so many things at me. He can do so many things to me. But my God 
can see me through. I don't understand. I don't even know why. I don't know the purpose. I can't explain it. But I will tell you one thing. If I learn from this and I come through it, I'll be a much better person. God has told us that uh, He's not going to leave you out there on an island all by yourself with Wilson. But if you need a Wilson, I'm here. Never go through anything alone. You don't have to. You have members in this congregation that will, they won't judge you. <laughs> they won't. We've all had opportunities to judge and be judged. But thank goodness my mom and dad laid a foundation. And we're building on that foundation that the world will judge you. Your friends and family will judge you. But my God and my godly family and my members of this church, they'll never judge me. They will help me get through this. They will stand beside me when I'm going through this pain. And we will all learn together. Because if you learn and I'm beside you, I'm going to learn. You can't have the attitude, you know what, each pain's different. And I, I notice that because my drug of choice is morphine. Okay? But morphine doesn't do anything for my wife. And it may be a drug that does something for you, but it does absolutely nothing for me. So just don't think that our God, like I said, we, we don't put God in a box around here. We don't put a number on God because when you do that, you limit God. And my God is, I'm trying to think of that phone commercial, unlimited, but I can't. So I missed an opportunity to be funny there. But you need to realize, don't put God in a box. All right? Just don't. God will disappoint you if you put him in a box. Because he's going to overflow and destroy that box. If nothing else, look at our blessing box. I mean, let's be real. I mean, honestly, how many of you really think that it was going to last more than what it has? I mean, how many of you really thought that people would still be excited and still want to give to it? Well, Brother Robert, if you shut up about it, we might be able to do that. It's not going to happen. It's not. Because me and Tim was the last one to leave last Sunday. And I don't know who filled it up, and I don't even care anymore because though that was God. But Tim's over here, and I can see him on the camera, and, and I'm turning the TV off out of the office, and I'm leaving, and Tim's still over there. And... I get in my truck, back out, and I start driving down the road. But I see this, this woman, all right, on one of those, I call it a Walmart buggy, but it's not. It's one of those mobile, yeah, one of those mobile things. And I see she's coming down the road. All right, so I kind of slow down and everything. And I'm waiting to see Tim pull because uh, I want to make a reference for it this Sunday and everything like that. And I was hoping I'd get a witness and everything like that. But I'm slowly going down the road and everything, and I see her. Please, please take a left. Please take a left. Sure enough, she takes a left right into our little part, right? And uh, it just brings joy to my heart. It really does. Because she needed it. Maybe her family needed it. And everything like that. God had already blessed me with you folks. And he's already blessed me to be able to get in my vehicle and look back and we actually have something in the blessing box to bless people. I don't know that woman. She doesn't know me. 
As far as I know, she's never been inside this church. But you made a profound difference in her life. I can just see her just loading up her little buggy, everything that she can fit in a little basket, and then just cruising down Brittonville Road woo, 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 with joy in her heart because now, you know, the emptiness that she had in her stomach will soon be filled. And that's what God is saying to us when we go through a pain. You're empty now. You feel the pain, but I'm about to fill it. You don't know what it is. You have no idea what's heading your way. Sis, you have no idea. Sister Deborah, you have no Paul, you have no idea. Johnny, I don't know much about your life, but you have no idea what God has in store for you. But it can go two ways here. You can take that pain and you can sit in its misery and it's tar, it's blackness, it's emptiness, or you can struggle through the pain with God and come out stronger and with a new purpose. And you can start fulfilling what God has and purpose for giving you that pain.